Hey everyone, welcome to another one of my weekly art videos and welcome to part one of my new three-part series on sketching trees and painting trees with watercolor. Throughout the many years that I have been sharing helpful content for artists online, I have received a whole range of questions and requests involving trees and I wanted to make sure that I provided solid and thorough uh, tutorials and advice for you guys must know information and this is why I decided to create a three-part series. In this three-part series, not only am I going to be sharing must-know information that you're gonna be able to take with you and create more successful drawings and paintings of trees, but I'm also going to be sharing my own personal process for sketching trees and painting trees with watercolor and my favorite techniques that allow me to achieve results that I love. In this first part, I'm gonna be sharing my step-by-step -step process for sketching five different types of common trees. We're gonna be sketching a round tree, a columnar tree, an irregular tree, a pyramidal tree, and a spreading tree. In part two coming up next week, I'm gonna be sharing my step-by-step -step process for painting these five different kinds of trees using watercolor. And I'm gonna make sure to bring in some fall color and this is so that you can see how these principles and this overall method would work if you were painting fall trees. And finally, in part three, I'm going to be covering how to sketch and how to paint dry trees. My favorite techniques to be able to create those thin, tapered branches in dry trees, which I often get questions on as well. So if you want to improve your trees, make sure to stick around for the next two parts in this series. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, I would recommend subscribing and clicking on that little notification bell so that you can be informed of when these new videos are shared. All right, without much further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight in. I wanna quickly go over the main types of pencil strokes or mark making techniques that you're gonna see me use, especially when I start getting into the value development or the shading and also creating textures. I want you to see what these mark making techniques and different pencil strokes that I'm gonna be using look like on plain, clean white paper so that you can have more of an understanding of what I'm gonna be doing. And honestly, this can even serve as a warm up exercise for you so that you can move on to actually sketching these trees a lot more successfully. They can help you loosen up, which is something I would really suggest when you are sketching anything that is organic. Loosen up your hand, your wrist, and your arm so that you don't create any shapes or lines and marks that look too stiff. And all in all, these types of exercises really help you switch to holding a pencil more effectively for drawing and will help you have more control over your drawing tool once you move on to actually sketching your trees. So the first technique that I used was simply back and forth motions to fill up an entire section or shape on my page with a layer of graphite. In that first one, I tried to maintain the same amount of pressure as I was filling in that shape so that the value that I created with my graphite appeared relatively even and uniform throughout that shape. And in the other two, I released that pressure as I made my way out, creating a type of gradient. Both of those are gonna be very helpful when I start creating my layers of graphite to develop different light and shadow and midtone areas throughout these trees in both the leaf section and also in the trunk. The marks that you're seeing me practice right now are going to be used in the leaves. I really enjoy using this type of mark because it helps me communicate or describe the general direction of the growth of the leaves in a particular section of the tree. You can see how I create a kind of fan effect where the upper portion in these first marks that I created is wider than the lower portion. And right here, I'm starting to practice these same marks in another direction. And that I create that subtle fan effect, taking into account the direction of the leaf growth for that particular type of tree 
and that particular section in that tree. In some types of trees, those leaves are going downward. In other trees, those leaves are growing more towards the sides, and in other trees, they're going upward. And the final mark making technique that you're seeing me practice right now is scribbling. You're gonna see me use scribbling, especially along the outer edges of the tree leaf shape to really communicate that irregularity along those edges, which is very important whenever you're trying to communicate any type of texture, those edges should not be left completely smooth. I'll also be using this type of mark making technique to add more irregularity around certain sections of the edges of the different groupings of leaves inside of that general leaf shape. And the scribbles also help me portray or communicate little extra uh, branches or leaves that may be going outside of the general leaf shape for the tree, which is also very cool. This type of scribble can be used in shorter lines or marks to also help describe wood texture in the tree trunk a little bit. But that's pretty much it in terms of the techniques that I'm going to be using to shade and to do my mark making. I will be using flicking motions from time to time whenever I want to create single tapered lines or marks to add in smaller branches throughout those leaf area and also at times something that is in between the first technique and the second technique where I am filling in larger spaces to deepen and darken certain shadow sections but I'm doing it quite loosely so I'm not evenly covering that section up and it ends up looking more like marks or very loose shading at no point in time am I going to go in and try to draw every single leaf or really take my time creating individual shapes for leaves and I'm just taking the main idea the main essence the main characteristics for that particular type of tree that I see in that photo to create the level of realism that I'm going for and to create that sense of believable structure in the tree that level of 3d-ness and I think that choosing the specific mark making techniques that will enable you to describe that leaf texture while keeping things relatively loose and focusing on what matters is very important before getting started with the drawing process always remember that texture follows form in other words texture is secondary to creating a sense of form a sense of 3d-ness and a huge mistake that a lot of beginners do when drawing trees is they immediately try to go in and maybe even use a scribbling technique but they really focus on texture first or they want to go in and draw every single little leaf when in the beginning of the drawing process, we should be focusing on the general and we make our way towards specifics. So we focus on the macro level structure of the tree, then on the secondary or smaller structures inside of that major structure. So in this case, it would be the groupings of leaves that are overlapping over each other, really understanding that 3D structure of what we're drawing before thinking of texture and adding in the teeny tiny leaves. And I'm gonna show you exactly my step-by-step -step process that is going to enable you to do this. But I just wanted to really communicate that you don't have to be overly obsessive about the details learn to simplify and take what matters from that reference photo and focus first on creating a sense of structure and understanding the structure of the tree before thinking of detail and texture if you focus on detail first then it's very likely that your drawing will end up looking very flat all right, so here are the five trees that I'm going to be sketching with you today. We're going to be sketching a columnar tree. We're going to be sketching a round tree, a spreading tree, an irregular tree, and a pyramidal tree. There are other types of trees that you may wish to draw, but I do want to mention that I use the same process and bring the same things to mind when I am drawing any kind of tree. 
So as I was mentioning before, it is essential to visualize and understand these trees as being three-dimensional structures. So as you're observing these different trees in the reference photos provided, try to visualize in your mind's eye what this tree would look like from all sorts of angles and perspectives. So for example, what does this tree look like from a profile view? What is that shape created by that profile silhouette of that tree? Or if you were up in the sky, maybe in a helicopter or a plane, and you were to look directly down at that tree, that tree was right beneath you, what is that shape created by that silhouette from that perspective? If you were directly beneath or under the tree, maybe laying down on the ground right beneath it, what is that shape of that silhouette created by that tree? And relate these shapes with 3D forms, simple 3D forms that you learned about in math class. If the shape looks like a triangle to you, then the tree structure, its 3D form, is going to be more like a cone or a pyramid. If the shape of the tree is like a circle, then it's going to be a sphere. If its shape is more like an oval, then it's going to be an ovoid. Or maybe, as in the case with the irregular tree shape, it's more of an abstract irregular shape. But it is still, in real life, a structure, a voluminous structure made up of different planes. This is what I would refer to as the macro level structure of the tree. And then within that macro structure, we have the smaller groupings of leaves, which are also a structure in and of themselves. If you don't visualize the tree as being a voluminous structure, then that is not going to come through in your drawing and your drawing is likely going to look flat. Learning to draw really requires you learning to see things in a different way and training yourself to visualize what you're looking at as a simple form or a combination of forms. And this goes for anything that you might be trying to draw. And learning to simplify and tune out the details that don't matter, especially in the beginning of the drawing process, is also key. Okay, so let's jump right into the first tree sketch. And this is going to be the round tree. For all of these tree sketches, I'm going to be using basic drawing supplies. I have my drawing sketchbook with me. I have a couple of different pencil grades, an HB pencil and a 2B pencil. I have a soft graphite eraser and I have a kneaded eraser. I always get started with the harder pencil grade that I have chosen for the drawing on hand, which in this case is my HB. And then I move on to using my softer pencil grade, which in this case is my 2B. I am starting my drawing quite lightly because this is essential in order to be able to refine your drawing as you go and in order to be able to easily erase mistakes. I will be making this a little bit darker just so that you can see it a little bit better, but I highly recommend starting your drawing as lightly as possible. What I am doing here is something that I like referring to as an envelope. It's just a very general kind of blocky shape that I am creating, taking into account the major angles that I'm observing in that uh, leaf portion of the tree and creating a very rough shape. Of course, since this is a round tree, I am visualizing this irregular shape inside of what would be a circle. With that general leaf portion in place, I go ahead and start drawing the shape created by the tree trunk and the major branches. And then what I do is I cut in, if you will, or remove negative shapes that I'm able to see in that very general leaf portion shape of the tree that I've drawn, which makes this shape, of course, even more irregular. But it's very important to acknowledge these negative shapes or large areas or portions of the leaves where you're able to see through them and into the background. Because if we go in and start filling in that shape for the leaves that we've created with our shading and our mark making, 
and we don't incorporate little sections where we can see through the leaves and into the background, it's very likely that it won't lead to a very natural look because usually in real life, we are able to see through at least certain leaf portions in some trees more than others and the leaves don't create a solid mass that is super thick and hard to see through at least this isn't the case with most trees even in fuller trees there are sections where leaves are more sparse than others once I do that, I add in the shape of the cast shadow under the tree. And this is very important because we have to acknowledge the location of the light source. In this case, of course, with trees, it's often going to be the sun because trees are outdoors. But where is the sun in relation to the tree? Is it to the right of the tree? Is it to the left of the tree? Is it hitting the tree right from in front of it, from the center? Oftentimes when we can't see the cast shadow on the ground created by the tree, um, which is blocking that sunlight from hitting that ground beneath it, it's hard because since there is so much irregularity present throughout the leaves and there are tons of shadows created by overlapping groupings of leaves, we don't have a solid point of reference. Of course, when it comes to trees, because trees are outdoors, and the light source is way high up in the sky above the tree. So we know that the lower portion of the tree or the planes that are facing away from the light source are always going to be darker. Unless the tree was indoors or in some sort of man-made patio or something like that, where artificial light is lighting up the tree from beneath it, then we can be pretty sure that those underneath planes, the bottom planes of the major structure of that leaf portion is always going to be dark. There's always going to be shadow there. But aside from that, throughout the leaf portion with all of these minor structures, they also have planes that are facing toward the light or away from the light, and they're overlapping each other, which blocks light from hitting that grouping of leaves beneath it or on the side opposite to the light source. So it's harder to tell because there's all of this irregularity. But in this particular photo, we are able to see the cast shadow on the ground beneath the tree and to the left. And when there is one single light source, like it is in this case, because we just have the sun, the cast shadow is always going to be opposite to the light source. So if the cast shadow is beneath the tree and to the left, this tells us that the light source, in this case the sun, is above the tree and to the right. And this is an essential piece of information that is going to help us with the shading. All right, so now that my macro level shape for my leaf portion of the tree is in and all these other important larger shapes are in, it is time to start noticing those medium sized or smaller important clusters or groupings of leaves in that reference photo. And there is no need to be a perfectionist about this. There is no need to add in exactly the same amount of groupings of leaves that you see in that tree or have exactly the same uh, size or shape. It is perfectly fine if you get them in just roughly. But what is important to understand is how they are overlapping over each other and how one grouping of leaves is creating a shadow on the one behind it or underneath it or to the left or to the right of it. Another thing that I'm acknowledging is which groupings of leaves are nearest to me as the viewer of this scene. In my current vantage point from where I am standing observing this tree, which groupings of leaves are coming toward me, are nearest me? And which groupings of leaves are farther away? Because you can start overlapping these shapes that you're creating for your groupings of leaves in order to do your shading later more successfully. Notice how I am overlapping these shapes in my sketch, covering up certain sections of shape edges with shapes that would be in front of them. Now, if you're having trouble identifying major or most important clusters or groupings of leaves, the first thing that I would recommend doing is making sure that you're using a good reference photo. 
if the tree is very dark in your photo, that is going to make it very difficult for you to see those different groupings of leaves because everything is going to be very dark and also if it's an overexposed photo everything is going to be very light what is helping me tell these different groupings of leaves are the value changes the shadows that i see around them or beneath them or in between them helps me distinguish different groupings of leaves from each other if you can't see these different values, if you can't see light values, midtone values, and dark shadow values in your reference photo throughout those leaves, then that is going to make it very difficult for you to identify those groupings of leaves. And the second thing, after making sure that you're using a good reference photo, is just practice and train yourself to see the different value shapes created throughout those leaves squint when you're observing that reference photo that is very very helpful because it will help you simplify everything that you're looking at into value shapes dark shapes midtone shapes and lightest shapes i'm mainly noticing those lightest shapes and those lighter midtone shapes and those are the leaves that i am enveloping or grouping into this shape I'm ignoring those darkest areas, those darkest shapes. I am leaving those empty for now, but I know that those darkest areas are areas that I'm going to have to do more layering of graphite in. I'm going to be darkening more later when I'm doing my shading. Once that is done, I move on to the next step of this process, which is I am getting started with the first layer of shading. So I'm still using my HB pencil. I've only been using my HB pencil at this point. And this first layer of shading is done with this pencil. What I'm doing here is I am using that first shading technique that I was talking about in the beginning of this video, where I am covering a section of my paper with a relatively uniform or even layer of graphite. I am barely pressing down at all because I wanna keep this layer light. I always make my way from lights to darks. And I am doing this first layer of graphite over the entire cast shadow shape under the tree. And then when it comes to the tree trunk shape and also the larger leaf portion of the tree, I am only adding in this layer of graphite in the side opposite to the light source. So because in this case, the light source is above the tree and to the right, I am filling in approximately, very roughly, a third or half of the tree trunk shape and a third or half of the overall leaf shape of the tree on the left, opposite to the light source. I also add in this layer of graphite in the entire bottom portion of the large leaf shape where, as I was mentioning before, shadow would be because these are the lower planes opposite to the light source where shadow would be. I also start adding in a little bit of shading where shadow would be behind or in between individual clusters or groupings of leaves. So which groupings of leaves are in front of which or on top of other groupings of leaves and creating a shadow on the grouping of leaves behind it or beneath it. Once that is done, it is time to switch on over to my 2B pencil grade. I am getting darker now. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be still using the same technique where I am essentially covering up a section of my paper, an entire shape, if you will, with a relatively uniform or even layer of graphite. But at this point, I am focusing on only layering on this softer graphite in darker shadow shapes that I'm able to see in that reference photo. In other words, I'm only doing overlapping and using the softer pencil grade in areas of darker midtones and darkest darks. I'm not looking to cover up any other sections of my leaves or my tree trunk. If I start covering up lighter value sections where I don't see deep shadow areas, I'm going to be getting rid of those very necessary lighter values and I'm going to be flattening out my drawing. It is all about amplifying that range of values. If you want to arrive at a believable 3D look, 
then you have to make sure that you are developing a wide range of values. You want your light areas, you want your midtones, you want your darkest darks. If your drawing stays way too light or it gets way too dark, then you're going to be arriving at a flat result that lacks dimension. So I am observing that reference photo and doing my layering with this 2B pencil in sections of darkest shadows that I see under the tree and also in between or around different groupings of leaves. I'm trying to leave the lighter midtones and the lightest lights free of any of the softer graphite. Once I've done that throughout the leaf portion, you can see me darkening the left edge of the tree trunk and the major branches opposite to the light source as well. I want to make sure that I'm staying away from the look of lines because in realism, there are no lines, there are no outlines. So I am seeing these shadow shapes as abstract, irregular shapes and making sure that any of the marks that I use or whatever you might see as a line has a line weight variation throughout it. Meaning anytime I am using lines or marks, I want to make sure that certain sections of those lines or marks are thinner and others are thicker, or some sections are lighter and others are darker. If I start using lines or marks, Anything that looks like an outline where there is one consistent weight from start to finish of that line, that is gonna lead to a more cartoony coloring book page, flat kind of look. And there's nothing wrong with that, but when you're trying to create more of a realistic effect, that is really going to take away from that style. I also go ahead and do a little bit of layering in the cast shadow shape to develop a range of values even in the cast shadow. All right, so now that I've developed a relatively good range of values throughout my entire tree and cast shadow, I go ahead and switch on back to my harder pencil grade, which is my HB in this case. This is the point that I start thinking more about textures because now I have understood this tree as being a three-dimensional structure. I have understood where major darker areas are with shadows, where lighter areas are. And this is a point at which I start incorporating techniques that can help me start describing textures. And now you're gonna see me use that second mark making technique that I was talking about in the beginning of this video. I notice the direction that these leaves are growing out toward and I use that to inform my choices, my decisions as to where I start those marks and where I want that widest section or outermost section of that quote unquote fan to be. For me, it's very helpful to visualize those branches underneath and throughout all of the leaf portion of the tree. Those branches are going to tell you that general direction that those leaves on that branch are growing out toward. And I'm just going into these lighter shapes that I've created that I can still see for these groupings of leaves and adding in these marks in these shapes. You can see that I'm not going in and pressing down hard and creating very stark looking lines and, and marks. I'm actually making sure that I'm going in quite light because I always want to make my way incrementally toward darker value shapes and marks. Another thing that I do in this part of the process after having added in those quote unquote fan marks that I was explaining about in the beginning of this video is I go over certain sections of the edges around this leaf portion of the tree because I can still see those straight lines that I created for my initial envelope. And at the end, I don't wanna see those lines. So I'm either going to erase them out or I'm gonna go over them with these longer scribbles to create a little bit more irregularity throughout those very smooth straight lines. Because as I said before, edges are very important when you're developing any type of texture. 
you don't want to leave those edges of those forms that have texture in them to be super smooth, unless it's a smooth texture, of course. But in this case, it's a very irregular texture. So I need to make sure that I'm having irregularity along the edges of that form or that shape. There is no need to go around the entire leaf portion shape. I'm only going over certain sections of it. After working on my textures a little bit more with my harder pencil grade, I switch on back to my softer pencil grade, my 2B pencil. And I am now in the last part of the sketching process. In this last part of the sketching process, I'm looking to do two main things. I'm looking to push darkest value areas a little bit more. So you're gonna see me do more overlapping of graphite using these same techniques that I've been using throughout this process, but now only over darkest shadow areas that I see in that reference photo. And I am now going to be developing more textures using this softer pencil grade as well. So I am both amplifying that range of values more expanding that range because I am now adding deepest darkest values, which is going to add more contrast and really make this tree pop. But I'm also looking to intensify textures and irregularity throughout this entire tree. So at times you're gonna see me go in and fill in a larger shape, if you will, using more of that first technique that I was talking about in the beginning of this video, where I am filling in an entire shape with more of a uniform value, and other times where I am looking to darken and simultaneously develop more texture and irregularity, I am using more of a scribbling technique, so more lines and marks. You're gonna see me go over certain edges of my entire leaf shape in order to add in more regularity along those edges as well. And I also darken certain sections of the tree trunk and the cast shadow to amplify the range of values in those areas as well. You can see how as I am increasing that range of values, now pushing those deepest, darkest shadow areas, this tree really starts coming to life. I'm almost done with this first tree study, and hopefully you can see how I am really just jumping around the entire tree at this point, and I'm being very loose, way more expressive, and at this point bringing in my artistic license more if I want to enhance certain areas or take away from certain sections, coming back to see the tree as a whole and making sure that I'm not adding too many lines or marks or going in and covering lighter value areas that I wanna keep protected with lots of that white paper shining through. And I am finally allowing myself to push down a little bit more as I am really pushing those darkest shadow sections. All right, I'm all done with this first tree study. This is the round tree sketch. It is time to move on to our second tree study. And now we're gonna be sketching the columnar tree. So let's make our way through this process once again. Same steps, only variations because the tree shape is different and the way that the leaves are clustering together and overlapping over each other is also different. Of course, I am using my HB pencil to start and I am drawing lightly so that I can refine my drawing as I go. Perhaps the tree trunk is more narrow, etc but the steps are exactly the same. So I am getting started with that general blocky envelope shape. You can see how my lines are pretty straight and I'm just basically paying attention to the major angles present in that irregular silhouette or shape created by the tree, visualizing that long vertical rectangle that columnar trees would fit into. I also add in the tree trunk and the cast shadow shape, which I can vaguely see in that reference photo. In this case, the cast shadow shape is also on the bottom left, which means that the sun is hitting this tree from the upper right. After adding in those important larger shapes, I go ahead and start separating out the leaf portion into the smaller groupings of leaves that I'm able to see in that reference photo. You can see how I am mostly creating lines in this case instead of shapes 
for those groupings of leaves and that is perfectly fine to do as well. Once again, I'm noticing the value changes present in that reference photo. To help me sketch in those lines or shapes for those important groupings of leaves that I want to make sure to add into my sketch. Once I have added those most important groupings of leaves that I'm able to see throughout that leaf portion of the tree in that reference photo, I go ahead and start creating my first shading layer using my HB pencil. So I had already observed that the light source is hitting this tree from the right because the cast shadow is on the lower left. So for this first light layer of graphite, I am filling in the entire cast shadow shape and I am also filling in the left halves of both the tree trunk shape and the entire left half of the leaf portion of the tree. Why? Because these are the planes that are facing away from the light. They are the shadow side, so to speak. Another thing that I do with my HB pencil before switching on over to my softer pencil grade is I do a little bit more overlapping in shadow areas created by the groupings of leaves in order to start developing a shadow effect or midtones in these areas. So it's all about understanding how these groupings of leaves are overlapping over each other and creating shadows on each other. Notice how for this particular tree, these leaves are kind of going upward. In other words, if we were to see through these leaves, if you were to see those branches holding up those leaves, those branches would be going up, slanted up. And that should give you an indication of where those shadow shapes would be in between these groupings of leaves. After that first layering of graphite, I go ahead and change to my softer pencil grade, my 2B pencil, and I go ahead and start darkening sections, starting with the shadow side of the tree in the cast shadow, in the tree trunk, and also in the left part of the leaf portion of the tree. And then I go ahead and do a little bit more overlapping in sections that I want to darken in between the groupings of leaves. After doing that, I switch on back to my harder pencil grade, my HB pencil. And this is the point in which I get started with using techniques that are more mark making techniques that will help me enhance those textures. I always get started with these kinds of techniques only after I've developed a good range of values already throughout the entire subject and I've understood it as the three-dimensional structure that it is. First, I use my harder pencil grade, my HB pencil, to create those fan marks inside of the shapes that I've created for the smaller groupings of leaves. I also start adding some irregularity along the edges of the leaf portion of the tree using long scribbles. And then I go ahead and change to my softer pencil grade, my 2B, and start using mark making techniques with the softer pencil grade as well. I make sure to use this softer pencil grade only in deeper shadow areas that I'm looking to push more. At this point, I am expanding that range of values, adding darker values than what I already have, and simultaneously to this, I am enhancing texture throughout the tree even more. If I've done my job right, then this is the point at which the tree starts to really pop because at this point I have already created a wide range of values. Taking into account, of course, the three-dimensional structure of the tree and the location of the light source in relation to this tree. I have very light areas, I have mid-tone sections, and I also have darkest darks now. I am making sure that I am creating irregularity throughout in every sense of the word while continuing to use these specific mark making techniques that I planned for and while continuing to observe that reference photo so that I can really have the characteristics of this particular tree in mind as I am doing all of this. I'm also doing my best to stay away from the look of outlines and I am focusing on creating edges instead edges where different abstract value shapes meet. A light value shape meets a darker value shape. 
and sometimes those edges are lost and other times they are more defined. This will help me create a more realistic look even while using quicker techniques and not really bringing in smooth shading or a blending stump or anything like that. Just to finish up, I'm gonna bring out my kneaded eraser to do some gentle tapping over especially the right edge of my tree shape because I can still see a little bit of that initial uh, envelope edge, especially on the right side of the tree where I didn't really add in darker values throughout that edge because that's the light side where the sun is hitting. So you can use your kneaded eraser to gently do any lifting of excess graphite that you might need to do throughout the process and lighten areas whenever you need to. So it is time to move on to tree number three, and this is going to be the irregular tree. Irregular trees have a leaf portion that has no specific shape. It cannot be related uh, with any specific shape or form. You can see how this particular tree is very asymmetrical, and I'm just doing my best to get that initial blocky envelope shape in, taking into account the major angles that I see here. In just a bit, I'm gonna be cutting into this uh, larger blocky general shape to create a more similar shape to what I see there. But for now, I wanna keep this shape as simple as possible. This is gonna help me focus on getting proportions right before moving on to the smaller details. Once that very general blocky shape is in, I go ahead and start adding in the tree trunk. And this tree trunk is quite slanted. It's at a diagonal and it has two parts to it. It's kind of a Y shape. I see two very prominent kind of wide sections or branches coming out of the base tree trunk. And I'm just trying to get in these shapes and these angles to the best of my abilities. Once those larger tree trunk and branches are in, I go ahead and start adding in some of the smaller branches that I'm able to see. There are some sections of this tree which are quite sparse and we're able to see through those leaves quite a bit. Once I have the leaf portion shape in and also the main tree trunk and branches in, I go ahead and add in the cast shadow shape. So for this one, we can't really see the cast shadow shape on the ground that the tree is creating because of the perspective that this photo was taken from. So what I do is I look at the values throughout the leaves. And for this tree, I can see that the majority of the lighter green values in the leaves are on the top left of this tree. So what I do is I use my artistic license to add in a cast shadow shape on the lower right opposite to these lighter values that I'm able to see throughout the leaves. And the reason why I wanted to add in a cast shadow shape is because by adding in a cast shadow, I can really situate the subject in place and really enhance that sense of mass and volume. And this is gonna help me create a more realistic look. After doing that, I start refining that general blocky envelope shape. And you can see me cut into it in order to create a more similar shape to what I see in the photo for those leaves. I'm going to quickly add in some smaller branches that I either erased out by accident as I was refining that larger leaf shape or that I simply had not added in before. Once that's done, it is time to separate out that larger leaf portion into smaller clusters or groupings of leaves. And as I am doing this, I'm just observing the value changes in that reference photo, noticing those deepest shadow areas in between those groupings of leaves and where the lightest greens are present. That can really give you an indication of where those important groupings of leaves are. Remember that those darkest sections that you see in that reference photo are gonna be areas that you leave empty and that you're gonna be adding deeper shading into later. Another thing that I'm really trying to understand at this point is which groupings of leaves are coming toward me or are closer to me as the viewer of the scene and how these groupings of leaves are overlapping over each other 
because that understanding is going to help me move forward with my shading much more effectively. Once I finished adding in those most important clusters or groupings of leaves in the leaf portion of the tree, I started adding in my first layer of light graphite. This is done with my HB pencil. I filled in the entire cast shadow shape and I also filled in the right section of the tree trunk. And I also went in and added in this light layer of graphite all throughout the right half of the entire general leaf portion of the tree, which would be the shadow side. After I did that, I did a little bit more layering or overlapping of graphite to start creating shadow shapes in between or around or underneath individual groupings of leaves where groupings of leaves are creating a shadow on leaves underneath them or next to them. After doing that, it was time to switch on over to my softer pencil grade. This is my 2B pencil. And at this point, I started doing even more overlapping of graphite, but now I'm only looking to push the darker midtones and the darkest darks throughout the entire tree. So I am leaving lighter sections free of this new layering of graphite that I'm creating with my softer pencil grade. When it comes to the shading technique so far, I've been using that first technique that I explained about in the beginning of this video, where I am essentially trying to fill in an entire shape with a relatively uniform or even layer of graphite. So I'm not using any scribbling or texture mark making techniques yet. I'm still focusing primarily on value, on creating light areas, midtone areas, darkest areas, and really starting to give this tree structure and three-dimensional form before starting to think of texture. Right around here is when I start using more mark-making techniques. The reason why I started bringing in more mark-making techniques is because I was already pretty happy with the range of values I had created. Now that I've developed that wide range of values or tones that are going to help me transmit that 3D look, now I can start incorporating more mark making techniques and more expressive, looser strokes. It doesn't mean that I can't go back to that previous first technique where I am looking to fill up an area with a relatively uniform layer of graphite if I feel I need to, I can still definitely do that if I am looking to develop a certain value or a transition value between lights and darks or whatever the case may be. But it is important to know what it is that you're trying to do. Are you trying to develop a value? In which case, maybe it's uh, worth using that first technique or if you're trying to develop texture then think of what mark making technique is going to help you easily describe that texture or if you're trying to do both develop a darker value and texture simultaneously then you can use something like tighter scribbles in darkest dark sections that you're really looking to push more which i usually leave for the end of the sketching process as i am really looking to push those darkest dark areas at the very end but always know what it is that you're trying to do and use the technique that is going to enable you to develop that more solid value shape or that texture or that value and that texture and the way that you combine these techniques and you layer them together is going to have an impact on your final results and if we lose track of what we're doing and we're just randomly starting to add lines and marks and we don't pay attention to the pencil grade that we have in our hand this is when we start making mistakes that start just making everything look very messy and we start making mistakes that snowball into larger and larger mistakes that are then very difficult to correct. I'm almost done with this third tree sketch. A little while ago, I switched on back to my HB pencil to add some texture marks in my lighter clusters or groupings of leaves. I definitely didn't want to go into the lighter sections of leaves with my softer pencil grade 
because if I have a very light value for a background and I go in with a softer pencil grade, those dark marks that my softer pencil grade creates are going to have a very high contrast when they are against that light background. So whenever I want to add in some texture into those lighter shapes that I've created for those individual groupings of leaves, I switch on back to my harder pencil grade to make sure that those texture marks are lighter in those. And what I am doing here is I am just pushing those darkest areas a little bit more by doing more overlapping with my softer pencil grade just to finish up this sketch. You can see how I am adding more regularity along some of the edges of these groupings of leaves as well, doing a little bit of scribbling along those edges, adding little teeny tiny branches as well, poking out from the groupings of leaves, and just adding in final details. You're also going to see me bring in my kneaded eraser to do a little bit of lifting of excess graphite in some sections. I wanted to add in light and dimension back into areas that I had perhaps covered a little bit too much with graphite, so I once again brought in that kneaded eraser to do some tapping and lifting in those areas. And this is my irregular tree sketch all done. And with that, it's time to move on to tree number four, which is the pyramidal tree. I'm getting started with my general, very blocky envelope shape, visualizing that triangle that these pyramidal trees usually fit in and creating that irregular shape that I am seeing in that photo inside of that triangular shape that I am visualizing in my mind. At this point, you can see me start to cut into this very blocky general envelope, noticing the groupings of leaves and how I have these kind of uh, upside down triangles or negative triangular shapes created by those groupings of leaves that are going up. And I'm just trying to capture that irregularity that I see present there throughout those leaves in that photo, taking time to clean up some of those edges of my initial envelope before moving forward, erasing them out. I also added in that tree trunk and the cast shadow shape beneath the tree and to the left. I can see a little bit of a cast shadow shape, a long dark shape on the grass in that reference photo. And it totally makes sense because the lighter values are on the right, which means that the light source, in this case the sun, is hitting the tree from the right. And this is why the left half of the tree is in shadow and the cast shadow is on the lower left as well. Once I am happy with that overall shape, I go ahead and start sketching in those groupings of leaves that I see in that photo. Once again, noticing lighter value sections and leaving the darker sections free of these shapes. Once I have added in these shapes for the important groupings of leaves that I want to make sure to add in, I use my HB pencil, my harder pencil grade, to create that initial light layer of graphite on the shadow side of the entire leaf portion of the tree, as well as the shadow side of the tree trunk, and I also filled in the entire cast shadow shape with this layer of graphite. Before switching on over to my softer pencil grade, I also use the same pencil, my HB pencil, to create a little bit of a shadow shape beneath my groupings of leaves or in between them where groupings of leaves would be creating a shadow on groupings of leaves underneath them or around them. Wherever it makes sense to start creating a shadow shape, I go ahead and do more overlapping of graphite in those areas and really acknowledging these shapes that I'm creating 
as abstract irregular shadow shapes. And again, really notice how the branches are growing out in this tree. The lateral branches coming out of the main tree trunk are going to the sides and a little bit upward in a kind of upward diagonal, which makes these groupings of leaves grow out in this direction. Notice how they are going up. This is going to have an impact on the shadow shapes that you create in between those overlapping groupings of leaves. As you are starting with your shading, ask yourself, which are the groupings of leaves that are nearest me as the viewer of the scene? And which groupings of leaves are farther away? How are these groupings of leaves overlapping on each other? At this point, I have switched on over to my 2B pencil grade and using my 2B pencil, I do more overlapping of the softer graphite only in darker midtones and darkest dark areas. When it comes to this particular tree, I am able to see through the groupings of leaves in that central section and I'm able to see that main tree trunk. So I'm starting to get that sense of that tree trunk in as I am continuing with my shading but I did want to make sure that I was creating that sense of some groupings of leaves being in between us and the tree trunk, overlapping over that tree trunk in irregular ways, partially hiding sections of that tree trunk from us. And even in those sections of tree trunk that we're able to see through the groupings of leaves, I want to make sure that I'm developing at least a slight range of values. I don't want to go in and cover up the entire tree trunk shape or the visible portions of the tree trunk shape with a solid uniform value, especially a very dark value, because that is likely going to lead to a very stark result. It's not going to look very realistic because a little bit of light is able to reach that tree trunk because it's able to travel through those groupings of leaves, especially on the right side, which is the light side. So right around here, I am starting to use more scribbling techniques as I am pushing those darker value areas and I'm starting to develop more texture throughout the leaves. I'm starting to add in some individual branches, some tapered strokes here and there, but I'm still focusing first and foremost on developing that range of values, those light areas, those midtone areas, and those darkest areas to provide that three-dimensional structure to the tree. And right around here is when I switch on over to my HB pencil again, my harder pencil grade. And this is when I start focusing more on creating a subtle hint of texture in the leaves of the tree. So you can see me go in with more of a scribbling technique in some of these leaf shapes that I've created. I make sure to use this harder pencil grade, which is going to create lighter marks and lines in those shapes that I want to keep light throughout the tree. And then I switch on back to my softer pencil grade. And now I use this softer pencil grade to help me enhance that texture a little bit more throughout the tree, especially in darker midtones and darker shadow sections. You can see me do more overlapping with this softer pencil grade in darker sections that I'm looking to push more and simultaneously to that in sections where I want to create a little bit more texture. You can see how I'm using some mark making techniques along the edges of the tree shape. At this point, I can barely see that initial envelope shape that I created. I want to make it disappear as much as possible. And I do this by either going over certain sections with new marks and scribbles, or I go ahead and erase little sections of my initial envelope out with an eraser. I think especially with this tree and also the columnar tree, you can see how I used more of this softer pencil grade in the side of the tree opposite to the light source where you see more dark values. You can see how I am not spending too long or not getting stuck in any particular section of the tree. I am doing this work quickly and jumping around from section to section and I'm continuing to come back to see the tree as a whole, making sure that I am not trying to overly describe anything and that overall 
I have that range of values that I'm looking for. I bring out my kneaded eraser once again to do some lifting of excess graphite to lighten some areas back up. And then I just take my softer pencil grade once again, my 2B pencil, and finally push some darkest areas and I'm gonna be all done. And our fifth and final tree is going to be the spreading tree. Spreading trees also have a very interesting overall leaf shape. A lot of the times that general leaf portion of the tree is very asymmetrical and in this particular tree I can see how on the right these leaves are fuller or denser and on the left I see more open spaces where we can see through the gaps a lot more because there are fewer leaves on the left. And I'll make sure to add fewer leaf shapes later on, but for now, I just wanna simplify everything into one general uh, oversimplified leaf shape. That's all I did. Then I made sure to add in the main tree trunk and main branches that I see in that reference photo to the best of my abilities. And I also add in a cast shadow shape below the tree and to the right. This is another case where I can't actually see the cast shadow shape because of the vantage point and the perspective that this photo was taken from. So I am once again bringing in my artistic license to create a shadow shape on the bottom right. Why did I choose to create that shadow shape in that place? Because I do see lighter green values in the leaves on the upper left. So this is why I made that choice to add in that cast shadow shape opposite to the light source on the lower right. It's so important to keep the light situation consistent in all of the different elements in whatever image it is that we're creating if we're looking for believable results. So once those larger shapes or envelopes are in, I go ahead and start adding in the smaller shapes for the clusters or groupings of leaves, the main ones that I'm able to see there in that tree in the reference photo. Once again, using the value changes present there to help me get an idea of where the main groupings of leaves are, noticing those darkest shadow areas in between the groupings of leaves. And once those simplified groupings of leaves are in, I go ahead and get started with my first layer of shading using my harder pencil grade, my HB. I create this initial light layer of graphite all throughout the cast shadow shape, all throughout the tree trunk because it's very dark in that reference photo, all along the bottom of the leaf portion of the tree and also in the entire right half of that larger leaf shape. Before switching on over to my softer pencil grade, I continue using my HB pencil, my harder pencil grade, to do a little bit more layering of graphite in between my groupings of leaves where clusters of leaves are creating a shadow on the leaves behind it or under it or to the left or to the right of it. And then I change to my softer pencil grade. And then the process is exactly the same that I have been using for all of the other trees. I'm gonna first focus on developing that wide range of values, those lighter areas, those mid-tone areas, and those darkest areas. And I've started developing a nice kind of three-dimensional sensation to this tree. I go ahead and start using more mark making techniques. When it comes to this tree, because those leaves are so sparse, there are so many gaps in between those groupings of leaves on the left. I'm going to make sure to add in more branches in this area, which of course require those single tapered pencil strokes. I want to make sure that as I am drawing those smaller branches, the outermost tip of the branch is thinner than the base of that branch which is connected to the main tree trunk. To do this I make sure to use single kind of sweeping or flicking motions. This really helps me create those thin tapered lines. I'm going to be talking much more about how to draw branches and dry trees in part three of this tree series so do stay tuned for that. Once I have developed that nice range of values I go ahead and start using more mark making techniques. So I switch on back to to my harder pencil grade to add in a little hint of texture in those lighter leaf areas. 
and then I switch on back to my softer pencil grade and use more scribbles and mark making techniques in darker value sections that I'm looking to push more and add more texture in. And then it's just a matter of continuing to amplify that range of values, continuing to push those darkest shadow sections a little bit more, adding more texture and irregularity along some of the edges of that larger leaf shape, and trying my best to use the softer pencil grade more on the shadow side of the tree, which in this case would be the right half. This isn't to say that you can't create dark values with your softer pencil grade. On the light side, it's just overall, I try to create more darker value sections in the shadow side. At the end of this process, I once again bring out my kneaded eraser to do some tapping over sections where I'm looking to lift up some excess graphite to lighten some areas back up that I have perhaps darkened too much.
and this would be the fifth and final tree study, the spreading tree. Did you enjoy this tutorial? I really, really hope you did. And if so, make sure to check out everything that I am offering over at my Patreon membership website, because for a very small amount a month, you're gonna get immediate access to my exclusive tutorials, classes, and resources that I don't share anywhere else. All of these exclusive tutorials include my downloadable outline sketches so that you don't have to start from scratch, reference photos, and my supply lists. There's already a library of over 75 sketching and watercolor painting tutorials that are real time, meaning they are not sped up or edited. They are fully narrated and I take you through my entire process, making sure to explain everything as clearly as possible step by step. Two new exclusive full length tutorials are added into this exclusive library every single month. For those of you who are interested in really taking your artwork to the next level and want to know all of the inside secrets that I learned about in art school and courses that I've invested in myself, there's also a full library on classes on art fundamentals in which all of the bases are covered. That library has now over 35 classes and workshops all have assignments at the end that help you actually put your knowledge to the test. And there's a brand new class or workshop added at the beginning of every single month. As if all of this weren't enough, you also get a weekly sketchbook prompt sent to your inbox to help you stay consistent with your art practice. There's a live training, workshop, or paint along session with me every single month. Members in the $15 tier and upwards get access to thorough feedback from me on their work whenever they need it, and much, much more. There are different tiers that you can join that give you access to different things, which you can choose from depending on your goals and needs needs. So go ahead and check it out. I'm going to make sure to leave a link where you can find out more down below in the description box of this video. And I would love, love, love to get to know more about you and your work and have you join this innermost art community of mine. All right, you guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.